Hey, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be building the Quadrasteria Crossbones. This is a True X 5 inch rig. Um, very tight, compact, very slim arms. Uh, you can either get 5mm or 4mm arms. In this video, I'm going to be building the 5mm arm version. The 5mm arms add extra durability and the weight is not that much. It is under 100 grams for the all weight with what you see in the picture here. So I hope you guys enjoy. Which is actually, it's a new like RROSD type thing. I've never actually used it before. Quadrasteria sent it to me to try out. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna be using it. If it doesn't work very well, I will let you know in the description of this video. If it does, I just won't say anything and expect that it works great. So we're actually gonna mount the PDB now. Down here, these four arms come together. Let me focus. Down at the bottom. These four arms actually come together and build off of each other and then you have these circle holes, circle holes where you put nylon screws which act for the PDB. So let's mount this up. Now that we have the PDB mounted, let's solder up the ESCs. So one thing I noticed was when you hook up the ESCs, you want to make sure that you solder your VTX power wires and signal wire to the pads before soldering up the ESC because on the crossbones it's a very tight fit between where the camera goes and where the PDB goes. So just keep that in mind if you're using this PDB. Now that we have all the ESCs hooked up to the PDB and the VTX and wire cables are hooked up, we are going to wire up the motors. soldered up to the ESCs which are soldered up to the PDB. We are going to connect the ESCs to the flight controller and start wiring up the rest of the components. have our motors, half our frame, our ESCs, our flight controller, our PDB, our receiver, and the wiring for our VTX and camera all hooked up. 
At this point, I'm going to go into the HS1177 and show you what settings I run. I'm also going to show you how to put a flight name in the camera. This is helpful when you have to go to certain races like MultiGP and some of the local chapters near you usually will require this type of thing. So let's jump into this. So right now, this is what my screen looks like when I'm flying FPV. You have my cam title in, and I put S3, which is the club I fly for, safety third. Now, you're going to use the controller like any other thing, and you're just going to press the home button, and now you get lens, which I keep on manual. Let's go to exposure. These are my exposure settings. So shutter, auto, brightness 65, AGC is just not selected, DWDR is on, return, light balance, ATW1, backlight off, day, night, auto, that's for if you're going to be flying a night course, uh, I would set that to night so you don't have your FPV camera trying to switch back and forth between daytime and nighttime, DPC stands for dead pixel count, um, and then let's go into special, oh I also have day, night, these are my settings, so DN level 80, DN level delay, 3 seconds, 32, 1 second, return. Let's go to special. So we have our cam title. So that's how I put Juhubby S3. Then we have motion, which you want to keep off. Privacy, which you want to keep off. Park line is just some silly feature like what you have when you back up your car. If you turn that on, you get that silly thing. I know some pilots fly with it. I'm not sure why. Image adjust. You have lens shade off, 2D and R on, mirror off. Font color is just adjusting your font. Contrast, I set to 90, sharpness 31. Set this display to user. This is where it becomes really important. Set your gamma to 0.55, head level to 23, and color gain to 245. Make sure if you can't find that, that's because you haven't put your display to user yet. Make image off, return. Com adjust, not needed. This is all stuff that comes preset. Language, version, return. And that's how you set your cam title and settings. Okay, now that we have the FPV system hooked up and the flight controller, let's do a power test for the first time to see if we get any magic smoke. No smoke, and let's check out the goggles. Yep, we've got video. Now the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna do some basic wire management. Okay, so now that the bottom part of the frame is done, let's do the top part. So I have already pre-put this together, but you're going to get this back SMA slot hole, and you're going to get two of these, and then your standard standoffs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting together the camera housing. The way this goes together is it's a pressure fit and a screw fit. So the screws that you have with your HS1177, make sure you have those when doing this. Also make sure you get the direction of your camera. So I have a top mounted, I have a top mounted connector. So you're gonna wanna make sure that that stays in the correct spot. I usually use the middle holes because that seems to work the best. And I'll just keep that loose for now. But this will give you basically from, I think it's negative 10 all the way up to about 55. Okay, now we have the video transmitter in place. I'm using the Hawkeye video transmitter. They even have holes cut out for it. I'm sure you can use something like an FX799T. I'm in, still been in between between dip switches and channel switching. Probably going to go back to the channel switching buttons, uh, but for this rig I had one of these. Um, not opened yet, so I might as well use it. And then I'm using my HS1177 in the front. It's a very tight build up here, and now all we have to do is just mount the receiver, uh, put the top plate on, and start testing. 